All right, guys, so to kick things off, I've created my app in the last video at the very end, and we used my kickoff uh, repo to do such the work. That means we, our gems are pretty much loaded with what we need. Um, we have device and everything set up. You can see I'm using Ruby 2.5.1 and Rails 5.2.0. Shit's hard to say. And other than that, our stuff is all set up and ready to roll. Um, there are, this is a new little mini magic gem that comes by default because we're going to use Rails Active Storage, which is going to bypass our need for like image uploads, stuff like that. So I'm actually, I was looking at the wrong, let me open this in Sublime. Okay, so we have our main app is going to be right here. And one, I think we only need one gem we do want to uncomment this one because we'll be using active storage from rails 5.2 and then we need stripe which will be uh, I'll reference this project just to get the latest 3.13 cool other than that we should be pretty close to being all set we've already got our Bulma uh, styles set up so they're already imported in our application. I've got some default functions that I like to use just to kind of streamline my, my flow. Definitely not something I'd use in probably every production app, but it's just an idea of how you can make things work. What we really want to kick things off with is getting this storage thing set up first, just to kind of get it out of the way, I think. So I'm going to install that. To do that, you can just do Rails, Active Storage, Install. It should do a migration kind of thing. And then you can run Rails DB migrate. Okay, so what that did is added a few migrations that look like this, which is a pretty lengthy one, which is, it creates these blobs and uh, tables for attachments that allow you to reference pretty much anything in such a way like you do relations in your models. It's pretty neat. So. Um, if a user has an avatar, for instance, you can have that just reference it in such a way. So what we're going to end up doing is having an attached thumbnail to a book model. So before I go on, I will make the book model, but I want to make sure that this is all configured correctly. You can go to uh, storage.yaml in your config file, and this is where a new file persists. And this is where you can actually enter in this data of where you want to save your images. Um, by default development, you could do locally. If you decide you want to go in production, which is most of the reason you would use Ruby on Rails is to create a production-based app, uh, you can do that by uncommenting these. Right now there's Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and you can even add DigitalOcean. I've seen somewhere else. So that's how you do it though. You just provide your credentials and it's kind of good to go. And the stuff you would actually mirror up to your uh, production environment to do that. So you have test local, you can put a production one if you want. There's a new mirror, a mirror property too, which allows you to upload to say more than one of these at once, which is cool. So you can do things streamline, really back up your data, which is awesome. You would just pass in each right here. We're gonna keep it as is for now. Don't really need to do anything else. So I'm gonna save that. Besides that, we have credentials we need to figure out too. So to do this, um, Let's just go ahead and add our keys that we're going to be using. All right, so with the credentials in 5.2, Rails 5.2, we need to run a command this, this time around. So you're not actually editing any type of environment variables, which is neat. So you can run bin rails credentials edit. And then it's going to spit back. It's no editor to open the file in. So assign it like this. So you actually can type this at this point. It's going to default to TextMate because that's, I'm pretty sure that's what DHH uses. Uh, he's the creator of Ruby on Rails, but I'm going to do Sublime. So you can enter in code there too if you use Visual Studio Code or something like that. And hit run. And it opens up a file of which you can add keys to, and this is encrypted. So you see there's like a timestamp on it. So as soon as you save this down, it'll actually close and then be encrypted from then on out. And there's this master.key file of which you would want to save that. It's like your password to this file. When you share this project, your team or other coworkers would want to enter that 
in the same file to be able to edit this file. So it's kind of a neat way to do this, uh, but still version control your keys. So there's no hunting to find the right keys. So this is the new way to do it. And it's interesting, but I, I, I think I'm digging it. So the main ones we want to add here are Stripe, uh, which would be found in go to developers, API keys. I'm going to copy my publishable key. This one is one that can be public. Stripe publishable. And remember the names of these. It's going to matter. I typically use it the same kind of naming convention always, so I just don't have to worry about it. So get my test secret key, which is your API key or your secret one. And that's pretty much it of what we're going to need. So I'm going to close that. I saved it. I'm going to close that file. You'll see your project will jump back to the window. It'll say new, new credentials encrypted and saved, which is sweet. And then you should be all set. So that gets care of, like, takes care of that setup. We've got active storage set up. Uh, the next thing is to generate our first model. And I'm going to use um, book to do that. Uh, we already do have our actual user model because of device. So that's handy. We do want to add a few things to the user model. And I'll do that after I do the book generation. So let's start with the book. So we'll do rails generate scaffold. I'm going to just do this fast book and it's going to have title, the string description, this text, and then we'll do an author this string and we could pass in a user ID just, just because. So I won't actually have a field for this, but we need it. It's going to be an integer. All right. So we can run that. And it should generate a ton of stuff. Some we need, some we don't. Uh, the, way, the main one I always delete by default is scaffolds. Just don't need it because we have Bulma. So it won't save that. And it comes by default with a books CSS, a CSS file if you want to use that. Uh, same with JavaScript. It always uses coffee by default. I think you can configure that to just be JavaScript, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, okay, so that takes care of that. The main thing we don't really need to do is focus on having the user ID in our form here. I'll come back and doctor this up, but it's just something I wanted to get rid of. For, for grins, let's run Rails server to see if this is working. And it's already running, so yeah, it's working. And I need to migrate those changes, so I'll have, have this open, Rails DB migrate. Okay, created books. Okay, so if we go to books, probably not gonna be nothing here, but there is a page, we can create a new book. We've got things going on with each. And cool, so we've got that. Uh, next, we can add a few parameters to the user model. And these are gonna be stuff that deals with the Stripe implementation as well as if the user is subscribed or an admin. So I will do a migration in this case. So Rails generate migration, since we already have a user model. Add data to users. We're just gonna enter these manually, I think. And then we're going to have, uh, let's start from the top. There's a bunch. We already have a name and email and then a ton of other things that come from the device. So we can add a Stripe ID. And we'll keep these strings. You would think they'd be integers, but strings are what come back from Stripe. So that's just something to keep into account. Subscription ID is a string. Hard last four string. There's gonna be a lot, so sorry for the lengthiness. Card expert month. And make sure you spell this stuff right. Card X year string. Now those are integers, aren't they? So integer.
Yeah, because we want it to be numbers. And then, uh, let's see, card type, year. And let's see, admin is gonna be a Boolean. And then subscribed is a Boolean. So it's true or false if they're one or the other. Okay, so that's a ton. Double check your spelling. I misspelled Stripe up there, so I'm gonna go right back to it. So Stripe ID, Stripe subscription ID, uh, and you can name these what you want. I'm just naming them this because they make sense to me. So card expiration month is an integer, card expiration year is an integer, card type is year, admin, boolean, subscribe, boolean. Cool. Let's run that and it should do a thing. We'll go to our subscription, or not our subscription, our um, migration. We got all this stuff here, which is good. I think that looks good to me. Oh, that one's wrong. So I'm gonna delete this and start that again. And you can just do it like this. Delete that and then come back to this file, press the up key and you can be able to do that again. So this card type is not year, it's string. That looks good. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's that. There we go, string, integer, integer, string, 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 boolean, boolean, stripe ID. Cool, all right, so with that done, we can do a Rails DB migrate. Cool, so add all those to our user model. If you wanna look at this stuff and kind of visualize it, I like to look at the schema. This is all stuff from active storage, which is cool. Um, this is stuff from our books model we generated. And here's our users, which is tons of stuff based on the device library, as well as stuff we added, like the name. And then of course, these things we just added. Cool, it's looking good. So with that in mind, we need a library model next. So we're getting all of the model or the actual, I guess, logic in place. Uh, the, the library model is gonna be a, more or less a join table where we can, have a user associated with a book, but it's through a library. So that will hopefully make sense coming soon. So let's do a Rails generate model, just the model. I don't need a whole scaffold here. Uh, let's do library. And a library is gonna have a book ID and a user ID. So we can just do book ID is integer, uh, user ID integer and I'll do rails DV migrate okay so we've got that and in our database we have that now I just want to see the schema just to make sure it looks good and it does cool okay so let's associate these models now let's make some sense of them and our main one is I think the most verbose one is gonna be the user model. It's gonna have quite a few things going on. We're gonna have many books. And it'll be dependent destroy. So if user destroys, actually that doesn't matter really, but I'll have that anyway. So I'll just keep it. Has many libraries. So here's where it gets interesting. So he has many libraries, library additions is what I'm calling it. So you can call this whatever you want here, but it's through libraries. So that way we can tie into books and users through the library model, or excuse me, we can tie into libraries and books through the user model with sourcing a book. So that's how that's gonna work. I did go ahead and add just a quick helper here that just determines if a user is subscribed, you can put this as a helper, but I'm gonna put this here just to make it easy. So we just say, hey, is there a Stripe subscription ID? And if there is, hey, they're subscribed, cool. Okay, so that one looks good. The book is the next pretty lengthy one. This one's gonna have 
our actual thumbnail that we're going to use using active storage and what's neat about active storage is you can has one attached thumbnail and this can be has many as well it's kind of neat you can do one or, or more than one it's, I would look into the documentation if you want to know more about that I think it'd be useful to learn um, if your project has paperclip or carrier wave or something already it's not super important that you convert um, but any new app you might as well do that so that's something they've taken into account so it, of course a book belongs to a user it had a book has many libraries and you can rename this um, added books through libraries source user okay so this is the same kind of idea we're going through the libraries model um, but calling it has many added books on the the book model and it's the source of the user so it's kind of confusing but it's a many-to-many -many relationship so we're allowing many books and many users to associate each other through libraries hopefully that makes sense okay so lastly we have the library model this is going to just belongs to this one simple belongs to book and belongs to user bing bang bong Okay, so that is the logic of our app. We still need to do, of course, all the architecture when involving payments and stuff like that. That's gonna get pretty tricky, but it's it's doable. And we do that with controllers. Uh, we will generate a subscriptions uh, controller and make all that work and be awesome. So the next video will start working into the controllers.